In this video, you'll learn the step-by-step -step process you need to take to get approved for a mortgage. That's coming right up. Hi everyone, I'm Carl. Welcome to another Home Buyer School video, a channel where you get the latest strategies, tactics, and tips from home buying experts. And remember, this is your first time on this channel and you wanna get the latest strategies from the experts, hit the subscription button below, hit the little notification bell so you don't miss anything. So today I'm joined by uh, Mushtaba Sayed, mortgage specialist with the Bank of Montreal. And today we're gonna go through the actual mortgage approval process. So Mo, let's go step by step how would someone actually get approved for a mortgage? Mm -hmm. So the process should be very simple. It's very straightforward. You go, you book a time with your banker, your lender, your mortgage specialist, go in. They will come up with a list of documents that you need to provide. Depending on your specific scenario, documents can vary that the bank will look for. You gather the documents, you go in for your meeting, and then you actually sit down, you have a conversation with your lender or your specialist at that time and say, listen, this is my first time buying a home. Maybe do some research, right? Watch your videos to see what kind of questions are good to ask your lender and specialist so they're prepared. I feel like the best clients that I come across are the ones who are mostly informed themselves. So you go into the meeting, you bring your paperwork with you, and then the lender will sit down with you and start the process, which is what we call our pre-approval application. So they will sit down with you, go through the pre-approval, they'll ask you a question regarding your income, your assets, your liabilities, they'll go over your credit with you, and they'll come out with roughly an amount that you guys can afford, which is within your budget. Now, an approval amount and a budget amount is totally different things. So you could approve for a lot higher, but it might not fit your personal budget, right? So some people have a own personal budget in mind that they don't want to go over a certain monthly payment. I would say kind of decide that before you go into your initial meeting, because most lenders, what they do is they'll qualify you for the maximum, especially in the initial stage, because they have no idea what's going to be out in the market when you go out. Pre-approvals usually are good for about 90 days, but the rate hold that we can do, so let's say there's a really good rate hold, we can hold that for four months. But even though, let's say your pre-approval has expired in 90 days, you can come back and see your lender again, and we can extend that again for another 90 days, as long as the situation hasn't changed. So uh, let's say you find that perfect home, let's say you find a home that's for 400,000, you write an offer on it saying you're willing to pay 390,000, the offer gets accepted by the seller at 390,000, they'll give you a certain time period, what we call conditional financing. They'll give you five to 10 business days, depending on the seller, to get your financing in order or get your financing approved. Once that day starts, the clock actually starts ticking from that time and you have that certain time period now to go ahead and get an approval. That's the reason why I really stress to my clients getting a pre-approval prior to that is because now everything's already in place. Now we only have to do is get the contract provided to the lender. Now it can actually approve you and the property at the same time. We get that sent off. Uh, you should get an approval within 24 to 48 hours. And then from there, you can go ahead, do the inspection that you need to do, come into the bank, sign paperwork, meet with your lawyers, and then you just move in. So it's actually not that difficult of a process, two, three steps there, but it should be a very seamless, enjoyable process if you've done your homework right in the beginning. So if you want to know more about the actual pre-approval process, we got a video up here and I'll link it in the description below as well. So Mo, once you, you know, you've selected a home, you've actually gotten your pre-approval, how long does the true mortgage approval take? Mm -hmm. From the time the clients submit documents or let's say the lenders submit documents to the underwriter, which is an individual in the back end of the file assesses it. It should only take 24 to about 14 hours maximum. It shouldn't take longer than that. Now there could be some off situations where there could be system delays or there's a backup or a log that's kind of moving very slowly, but your lender would be able to tell you that at that time because they technically have an idea. But usually uh, if everything's going smoothly, it should be 24 to 48 hours, no longer than that. So what are the requirements somebody has to have in terms of getting the approval? So what most lenders look at is called five C's of credit. So the five C's of credit are character, capacity, credit, capital, and collateral. Capacity just means, can you afford the home that you're purchasing based on the stress test, based on the amount? So for that, we will ask you for certain types of documents that you might need, depending on your scenario. If you are an employee, we can ask you a letter of employment, pay stub, direct deposits going into your account, and we can ask you for an annual document as well, T4, your tax returns. If you're self-employed, it could be a very different conversation. They could be as simple as to your tax returns, or we go for like a deeper dive if we can't find the information that we're needing. But the lender will tell you at that time what you need to do. The other thing we look at is credit, right? That's another C of the lending process is credit. So we want to make sure that you have good credit uh, to buy a home with Encounter is minimum is 600. So if you have anything lower than 600, unfortunately, you will need to get a co-signer, someone that has a higher threshold of credit to kind of help you. 
Uh, there's also certain guidelines, for example, let's say higher ratios. For example, if you want to go for your maximum borrowing amount, you want your credit to be at least 680 or higher, and that gives you the maximum room available to buy. If you're less than 680, then your purchasing power is going to be a little bit less based on the threshold. It could go down by um, a couple hundred dollars a month. It really just depends. Your lender will discuss that with you at the time of the appointment. Another C of purchasing is called collateral, which is now the property in place that we're actually using as collateral. We want to know that it, it meets our guidelines, right? Let's say there's no issues with the home. It's not too old. It's not falling apart. There's, uh, let's say if it's a condo, there's no special assessments going on. All that stuff the bank will look at because not only are they using that property as collateral, but they're also trying to save you as well. As a homeowner, you don't want to get stuck with something that you unfortunately did not know. And now you're stuck paying that mortgage for 25 years and let's say the value's not there or there's a major issue with the home, right? So that's the first three C's of credit. We look at uh, character as well. So character, what we explain to our clients is you promise to pay something which is let your mortgage payment on time. We will assess that by looking at your credit, your, your income, we look at all that stuff to see, can you afford to pay or will you pay what you promise to do? Capital just means we look at technically what your net worth is, right? So let's say your assets minus your liabilities mm -hmm. is your net worth. It could be negative, it could be positive. It just really depends on a lot of different situations. So if the, if the underwriter or the bank looks at certain life stage you're in, you're, you're just starting out for the first time, you might have some student loans, so your capital might be negative or your net worth might be negative. Mm -hmm. It's not a big deal. It fits perfectly with your life stage. But now that the scenario is reversed and let's say you're 60, 65 and you have negative net worth, now the bank might think or look harder and say, what happened here? You don't really have showed any history of borrowing or having mm -hmm. any history of saving. So they might question that a little bit more. So when you talked about credit, if you do a mortgage approval, does it impact your credit score? It's, it's a case by case scenario. So it's very hard to say, right? So if, for example, let's say you're coming in and you decided you picked your bank, you've done your research and said, this is my bank, I want to deal with them and you apply for a pre-approval, it's not going to hurt, right? But mm -hmm. what happens in most scenarios is clients unfortunately go and they shop at multiple places. And then what happens, it does reduce your score because a credit bureau is just, it's a tool that banks use, right? So what it says to them is that this person has applied at five or six different places. Uh, they haven't got approved for the first four, not going to their fifth. Now they're a credit seeker and they haven't got approved. So that is what the credit bureau thinks and it reduces your score by that much. But in actuality, what you might be doing is just rate shopping. But if you are rate shopping, definitely make sure that the lender is not pulling your bureau. That's something that you don't need to do at that time. You can have uh, a rate hold or you can even discuss rates without pulling your bureau. So it doesn't affect negatively on your credit bureau. I would definitely not recommend shopping with five or six different lenders just for rates, right? That would definitely impact your score. It also depends on specific lenders, how they report to their credit bureau. If you can show up as, as a soft hit, which is an inquiry, or a hard hit, which is actual real live application. Ask that to your lender as well to see how they report to their credit bureau. So. And one more thing in terms of talking to your lender, what are some of the questions that you probably want to ask when you're actually going out and finding a lender? The biggest question I feel a lot of clients don't ask is going to the nitty gritty of the terms and conditions of a mortgage. Not every mortgage is built the same. There's certain aspects that let's say are built into the mortgage where you have some certain stipulations, but you also have certain benefits built into a mortgage. Let's say you want to prepay a certain amount and let's say this mortgage that you're getting from a specific lender doesn't let you prepay to the maximum amount that you are willing to do. You would want to discuss that with them beforehand and say, I want to repay 20% of my original mortgage balance every year. Can I do that? And they might come back to you and say 10%. That's the maximum you can do. Anything over that now is you want to be penalized. So now that doesn't fit your budgeting and your criteria. I would actually go and speak to a lender that actually fits. Uh, another really good one is something called uh, a mortgage cash account, which I think is amazing, right? So what happens is anytime you put large sums of down payment, which is above your normal mortgage payment, let's say your lump sum payments, it goes actually reduces your mortgage by that amount, but also sits in something called a mortgage cash account. So let's say in the future you have an emergency, you have a need for that fund, you can actually go back into the bank and actually take that money out. You don't have to requalify for that, which is a great incentive to add, which is built into the mortgage. A lot of people would not realize that if they didn't actually go into the nitty gritty in terms, right? So definitely find out there's always more than just a rate that's attached to the mortgage. Terms and conditions are really, really a big part of it. Uh, because at the end of the day, that's going to impact you more than, let's say, a 0.1 difference between lender A or lender B, right? Mm -hmm. So 0.1 difference to me is not make or break, 
but the terms and conditions could be a make and break for our clients. So the question of the day I have for you is, how is your experience with the mortgage approval process? And do you have any tips? Let us know in the comments section below.